Hi, my name is Jessica Burgess, and I am an acute care surgeon at Eastern Virginia Medical School and a member of the East Emergency General Surgery Committee. Today, I'll be discussing several EAST landmark studies regarding the diagnosis and management of necrotizing pancreatitis. The first study is a meta-analysis published in the Journal of Gastrointestinal Surgery that examined whether prophylactic antibiotics would improve outcomes in necrotizing pancreatitis. They included nine randomized control trials and two cohort studies. They looked at three separate groups. The first group was all 11 studies. The second group was just the randomized control trials, and the third group was just the cohort studies. They did not find any decrease in the rate of infected pancreatic necrosis, whether or not antibiotics were used. While there was no decrease in all-cause mortality in the randomized control group, there was a significant decrease in mortality in the cohort group and when all studies were combined. They also did not find any difference in surgical intervention or fungal infections with the use of prophylactic antibiotics. With the conflicting results regarding all-cause mortality, it was recommended that additional studies be done to further assess whether prophylactic antibiotics is helpful in infected pancreatic necrosis. This landmark study from the Dutch Pancreatitis Study Group in the New England Journal of Medicine was published in 2010 and is the first major prospective randomized control trial that directly compared the minimally invasive step-up approach, commonly known as the VARDS procedure, versus the previously standard open necrosectomy in patients with necrotizing pancreatitis. Patients were included in this study if there was imaging evidence of pancreatic necrosis. Randomization and intervention were delayed until four weeks from presentation if possible. There were a total of 44 patients in each arm, the primary endpoint was a composite for major complications and mortality. The step-up approach showed a significant decrease in complications and mortality, 40% versus 69%. There was no difference in just mortality between the groups. There was also a 12% reduction in hospital costs and up to a third of the minimally invasive group were able to avoid surgery altogether and were able to be successfully managed with just percutaneous drainage. This study out of Lancet in 2017 by Dr. Van Brunschot and colleague compared the standard step-up approach and VARD for infected pancreatitis to an endoscopic debridement and necrosectomy. This was a randomized multi-center trial for superiority that took place over 19 hospitals in the Netherlands. 98 patients with infected pancreatic necrosis were randomized and the primary endpoint was a composite of major complications or death within six months. The major complications included organ failure, bleeding requiring intervention, perforation, enterocutaneous fistula, or incisional hernia. There was no significant difference in either the com composite endpoint or mortality. There was a significantly shorter length of stay in the endoscopic group, as well as a lower rate of pancreatic fistula formation in the endoscopic group. While this study failed to show superiority of endoscopic management over the step-up surgical approach, more research should be done looking at the endpoints, such as length of stay, where we may be able to find a benefit. Lastly, this retrospective study from 2007 in JAMA surgery by Bessa Link and colleagues looked at the timing of surgical intervention for necrotizing pancreatitis. They retrospectively looked at 53 patients and divided them into three groups those who underwent surgical intervention in the first two weeks, the second two weeks, and over 30 days from admission. They found a decrease in mortality the longer that surgery was delayed. The difference in mortality was statistically significant and was maintained when controlled for preoperative organ failure. The delayed intervention groups did have more antibiotic exposure as well as more fungal and multi-drug resistant infections. These were attributed to the prolonged antibiotic exposure, but in the end did not have an effect on mortality. Although a retrospective study with its inherent limitations, it certainly suggests that delaying operative intervention at least 30 days for necrotizing pancreatitis is associated with a decreased mortality. Thanks for tuning in to this East Minute on necrotizing pancreatitis.